Hey what's up guys, Zach with Wired Customs and today we're going to talk about bracing the car before we chop the top. One thing I think is not really documented very well on YouTube right now is bracing bodies before you start chopping the tops. Um, this is very generic. This video will actually go for many different body styles. But I'm just using this car as an example because that's what I have right now. But what you're trying to avoid with this car and this body style is exactly what you're trying to avoid with any body style. Now this car is just a bunch of pieces of stamped metal welded together. That's basically what most cars are. So it could be under tension. It could be pulling itself together. It could be pushing itself apart. You could cut this roof off and the door will spring open. Maybe it'll just stay in place. But one thing's for certain, if you cut the top structure off, the bottom structure has less support. It's like a square box tubing. And if you just cut one side of that box tubing off and still have all the exact same amount of weight still pushing and pulling on it, it could bend that square box tubing because it's no longer square. That's basically what we're doing when we're cutting the roof off. We're cutting one end or one side of the box tubing off. Now what we're going to do before we cut the top off is we're going to add the structure that the top is giving the rest of the body inside the cab. So when we cut the top off, that structure's still in place. It doesn't want to come in or out. It doesn't want to bow up or down. A lot of these cars, if you cut the top off, all of a sudden the doors won't shut. That's because the body or the lower section of the body is bowing down now because it doesn't have its rigidity or it could be sagging in the middle because it doesn't have its rigidity. So here's what we got going on in this one. Now the way that I go about it, adding that structure that the roof is giving the body is one inch by one inch square tubing. I believe this is 14 gauge square tubing. Um, thicker is fine, it's just more expensive, but I'd say 14 does the job just fine and it's fairly affordable. I have six five foot sticks inside this car right now holding this structure. That's what I had on hand. I made it work. As you see on the bottom, I had to add that extra square tube just to make up for the length that I didn't have. So if you're working this exact 1934 body style, um, I would say go with seven sticks of five foot square tubing. That'd be perfect. You'd have a little bit left over. Now something that's really important for me in all my chops, I like to weld all of our structure inside the cab with the door shut. The very first thing you need to do before you even think about chopping a top is making sure the door gaps are good, the door shut, and making sure that the body is pretty close to being fully restored steel-wise. There's not big holes in the floor, there's not big rust holes in the bottom of your door. Stuff like that will come back to bite you in the long run when you're trying to square that stuff up later. Make sure you square it up first. To get a really, really good chop, it's better to start with a rust-free cab or get it to being rust free before you cut the roof off but anyways we're talking about the structure and the chop now we want to make sure when we make the structure that the body once we cut it can't pull it in one direction or another because our structure is fighting the body from moving in every direction or pretty close to every direction now you can see that I have a crossbar on the top and the back and a crossbar on the bottom and the back what I'm trying to do is make sure I have good surface area to weld to so we make sure the body doesn't get pulled in front, back, up and down direction. So that's why I don't just weld my crossbars in the back to the floor. I weld them to a bar on the bottom that the bar is welded to the floor because that bar has way wider base of structure and strength than just welding straight to the floor itself. I think that's extremely, extremely important. Now on this body style, I took the dash off and I welded a bar across where the dash was. I did that because there's not a really good spot to weld our door bars to. I like doing it this way though because now I have good weld, good structure going across and another really important uh, reason why you want to put that across the dash bar is because on this body style when you start pulling the chop down uh, you want to lean these eight pillars back in order to get them to come back you actually cut all the way across the cow so when you tilt the A-pillars back the whole windshield surround tilts back with it so the windshield sits nice and flush on the front. Something to keep in mind if you're looking at this body style but just generically speaking now if you look on the back also I have from that crossbar on the top I'm going to the back trunk area of the car. Now I want to make sure that 
this body doesn't sag up or down. So that's why I have those crossbars continuing throughout the entire body. It starts at the dash, hits our center section, then goes to the back to the trunk. So that's basically rigid front to back all the way. That's going to be giving us the full structure of the roof to really help keep this cab stay solid when the roof's off of it. Also on this body style, I have those center pieces in the back close enough together so I can cut the roof a certain way and pull it down. I'm going to have the roof sitting inside the cab before I make my second cut so I can scribe where the roof is sitting on the back side of the cab. That will make more sense in my next video. The next video we're actually cutting this car on a live stream. So the main idea of it is you need to have your braces set up in such a manner that the body can't go in any direction once the top is off. Now I didn't structure the pillars, I structured the cab. The pillars are going to get moved, they're going to get angled, they're going to have a lot of stuff going on with the pillars. So I don't ever worry about structuring the pillars uh, on this type of body style. Also with the top, I'm going to be pie cutting it, moving these pillars forward and back to get my angles right. So I'm not worried about structuring the roof. That is not for every car. Some cars you do need to structure the roof depending on how you're going to chop it. Now obviously, or maybe not obviously, make sure you take your time on these welds, let them cool down. The very last thing you want to do is get one of these bars to warp and start pulling or pushing in the wrong direction or any direction at all. You want everything in here to settle and you want, when you're done welding these, for your doors to shut just as easily as they did before you welded them in. Now when you get to the point where people start saying, that's overkill, you didn't need that much, that's when you're doing a good job because that's where you want it to be. You want to do the overkill because these sticks, these square tubings, are way cheaper than the time it takes to fix mistakes with the body drooping. So if you use a little bit extra, that's completely fine, but make sure they stay cool so they don't warp themselves. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's going to be short and quick this week. I'm driving away. Bye! Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video this week. It's going to be short, quick, and to the point. I hope you found it educational. If you did, just like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be chopping this car on a live stream January 29th, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Rod and Style YouTube's channels. I'll have their YouTube channel link in the description of this video. Make sure you follow them too for their future videos. Now stop watching this video, get out in the garage, and get your shift together. <laughs> I'm too big for this shit.